Hey Jim here, welcome to the channel. Today is going to be the first of something I've been wanting to record for a long time, part of the DCI DCS series, Decompression Illness, Decompression Sickness. And today's topic is gonna to be Calling Dan USA, Divers Alert Network. Stay tuned. I'm gonna be talking to you about some of my own experiences. Unfortunately, I've had a number of them, Calling Dan America, as well as Dan Japan. And why I'm going to say, always call Dan USA. First and foremost, what I'd like to say, if you have any doubt at all, call Dan. Divers Alert Network, call. And I'm gonna have the number in the link below, call. There's no shame in getting bent, right? That, that seems to be the issue. The, there seems to be a shame associated with the thought that, oh, I might be bent. People are gonna think I'm a crap diver or I, I was irresponsible or, or something. You might be irresponsible. I have no idea. However, uh, that still doesn't matter what the reason was, whether it was a good reason or a bad reason, you don't want to be crippled or you don't want to be partially paralyzed or in pain for the rest of your life. If there's any doubt, call Dan USA. Enough said on that. Next. In my younger years as a diver, a dive master, and instructor, I used to do a lot of reading on the boards, scuba board, uh, the deco stop, uh, etc., news lists, accidents and incidents. And overwhelmingly, what I found was people who thought they were bent, who thought they had DCS, would suffer from inaction, from doing nothing. And they would write onto the board like a handful of days later or a few days later, oh yeah, you know, I have these symptoms, what do you think? And everyone would say, you know, call Dan or get to a chamber. Uh, what to expect? So when you call, let's talk about Dan USA first, the good experience. Now, if something comes up after you're diving and you have a feeling that it might be DCS related, what you're gonna do, and there are lots of threads that you can read about this out there, so I'm not telling you anything new, but maybe some of you are seeing this for the first time, so that would be useful. You wanna have an accurate documentation of what you did all your days of diving, if it was multiple, multiple days. If not, what you did on the day before your night, your diving, especially the night before. Unfortunately, very often, um, DCS is gonna be related to, well, I think, dehydration, but drinking, uh, so Cozumel, <laughs> or are there certain locations where uh, what you did the night before might impact uh, what you did the day? Any medications that you're on, uh, let's like I said, your diet profile, your uh, symptoms, your symptom uh, timing, right? What happened when, for how long, what spread, what was going on? Have you had any treatment? Oh, maybe you breathed some oxygen on the boat, or I have no idea. When you call Dan USA, it is such a pleasant professional experience. It's the best. You've got doctors, motivated, interested doctors who answer the phone and they want to be problem solvers. They're going to listen to uh, everything that I just mentioned, you know, and ask you other stuff that, that they want to know. Uh, I, I might have left out some things. I'm, I'm just a guy. And then with that information, I don't want to say diagnosis, they'll make a two-point recommendation. On the one side, which I've had, uh, you know, they'll say, okay, it sounds like something is going on. You should definitely have medical help. However, that doesn't sound like how DCS, right, decompression illness, normally manifests. You have some symptoms, something's going on. It doesn't sound like DCS. I would definitely get medical help. That's one option. Uh, another option is, yes, you know what? That sounds like it is DCS related and, or DCS, DCI related. And uh, we would like to uh, contact for you like some center or make arrangements they will get involved in the arrangements usually uh, depending on the country you know usually that'll that'll it's work out thank you. you know they will get the ball rolling and, and hopefully you're in the US because then the ball really rolls right I mean the options and I'm gonna tell you how the ball does not roll in this country okay the the other option is they might say you know what that that really doesn't sound like DCS nor does it sound like anything serious I've had that as well you know, I had a diver call up and, and actually it turned out to be um, a skin condition, like itchiness. Uh, I forget, <laughs> eczema maybe, something like that. And, and the person was a little bit of an excitable uh, personality, which kind of added to the effect of that one. So one example of when I called, and which was kind of interesting, I, I, unfortunately I have a lot of experience with this. I was doing my son's open water and coming out on the last, I was diving nitrox in like maximum depths of 12 to 15 meters. I, I don't remember, you know, on that weekend because I was doing other dives as well. I'm sure my max depth was 15 meters with nitrox, 32% nitrox. 
I, on the, one of the last times I was coming out of the water and my left foot, the top was tingling and like numb, tingling. Just one foot on the, on the top of the left foot. So I called, I had this sensation, I called Dan USA and I'm speaking with a doctor and the doctor, you know, listened to everything, what I did before, what my diet profile is, what the gas was I was breathing and came up and said, you know what, something's going on. Obviously, does not sound like how decompression illness would normally manifest. You want to go and get a CAT scan and, and find out what's going on in your country, which is I did and I found out I was having a neck problem which complicated my whole life, uh, diving life after that. That's another video. Another call to the U.S., like I mentioned, that didn't turn out to be anything was that skin condition. You know, the person had uh, eczema, which was somehow uh, aggravated by water and dryness or bacteria or something, and they diagnosed that as well. We thought she maybe had the skin bends, but Dan, Dan USA was able to make some good recommendations, uh, you know, listening to, and they have the data, right? It's all big data. Right? They get all the data and then there are the probabilities of outcomes. It's great. Let's make this, this promise, uh, you know, put shame aside. If you're in a situation where most of the calls, luckily most of the calls I've made to Dan USA have not been decompression illness or, you know, decompression sickness, so, which is a good thing. So if you think that you might, give them a call. There's no shame. There's no like, oh, why did you call here? You know, you're wasting my time. There's nothing like that. They're there for the service. They're happy to get a call. You do not need to be a Dan member, which, you know, I am and I was at the time, but probably sometimes I called. I was not a Dan member in my earlier days. So you do not need to be a Dan member. Give them a call. If it's nothing, you know, they're going to tell you they're not going to have any feelings. Oh, you know, why'd you waste my time? It's nothing like that. They're professionals. They're there to diagnose and to help us be as safe and healthy divers as possible. So any doubt, give them a call. Now, to show you how lucky you are to have access to Dan uh, USA and why if I have a problem here in Japan, I will still call Dan USA. Uh, here, here's, well, here's the other thing. So in Dan USA, you have a problem. Uh, they, they work the data. They say, yes, uh, this sounds like a high probability. It is a DCI event. We're going to notify XYZ chamber, which is closest to you. We're going to arrange uh, an ambulance pickup. You know, if you're remote, a helicopter pickup, I, I have no idea you know, where you are. Um, or if you're close enough, get there yourself. And they're going to be prepping up the chamber because chambers require preparation and everything is going to be ready for you when you get there. Move now. Or stay put, we're going to move you now. If this is a weekend, it's an evening, it's whatever it is, this is what's going to happen. It's fantastic. Now, here's the case in Japan. You know, hospitals here are a different deal. The whole emergency room idea is a different deal. And unfortunately, it relates to chambers. If you call Dan Japan, you are not speaking with a doctor. The person who's going to answer the phone is a dive instructor, some sort of a dive professional. And what they have in front of them, they have a list of your area. Where, where's your area? Oh, you're in Tokyo area. Oh, okay. I have a list of... Uh, of hospitals that have chambers in Tokyo, the Tokyo area, that you can contact Monday morning. Oh, but it's Sunday and I, you know, this is real pain and I have that, that. yeah, yeah, uh, Monday morning. Unfortunately, I've had some personal chamber experience. I've never heard of anyone successfully going to a chamber on a weekend. And I'm guessing the only case they would do that is maybe if you were absolutely paralyzed or in a life-threatening condition. So I've never heard of it happening. I've never seen it happen. My, my experience might be small compared to others. I'd love to hear if someone has experience. And I have experience with several very large Tokyo area medical institutions with some pretty major chambers. So that's all they have is a list. And if you ask them any further advice, they're, they're not going to have anything to offer because basically they're the same as me, right? Or probably less, actually, because I, I have some chamber experience now. So, yeah, so it's very dissatisfying experience. So if you are overseas, my, my advice to you would be, well, first, maybe get acquainted with what your Dan, local Dan network really is, who, who actually will be answering the phones and what they are capable of doing. I would also acquaint myself with what happens with uh, chambers in your area. One of the things I do for rescue training, actually, is I have my rescue candidates 
because there's a, like a dive area that we usually go to. It's in Izu, and, and the dive centers are kind of networked together with their emergency uh, medical response. And what I'll have uh, rescue candidates do the first day that we go to Izu, we, we go to our dive location, is they, they go in and they talk to the staff and they quiz them on what is the emergency response uh, system. How do I activate that system? What happens? What's the closest chamber? Where is the oxygen on this beach? How do we transport people for different levels of emergency? Right, we have uh, taxi, we have, we have cars, we have taxi, we have, there's a helipad pickup. Uh, there are a couple different uh, chambers that normally would, would be in use. So one of the first things you should do, I think, uh, if you're serious about diving in your local area, find out what the emergency response pattern is, and then find out about your local DAN network and join that network and uh, learn about it. So who's gonna be answering? What's the deal with chambers? When are they open? How do you get there? Uh, how does that work? I think that's just a responsible um, step in diving, especially if you're doing, starting to do things more serious, deeper diving, technical diving, etc. Right, so back to my recommendation. My recommendation, if you think any problem might be occurring, call Dan USA. You're gonna be talking with professional medical individuals who'll give you the best recommendations possible in no time. And then you can reconcile that with your local situation, like me, Japan, how you're going to do that. Probably, as I recall, Dan USA doesn't communicate so directly with the facilities in Japan. So I had, I had to make that jump and, and contact. But depending on the country, they might um, take care of those arrangements for you. Secondly, acquaint yourself with your local Dan network, how to activate it, what the options are, and how you would activate that uh, if you would need to. Alrighty. I hope that gave you some insight. The thing I opened with and I would like to close with, absolutely, there is no shame in, in calling Dan and getting advice. If you have any suspicion that, that there, you've had a DCI event, and whether you have had a DCI event or not, there is zero shame in that. Put the shame later. Maybe you did something stupid. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I did something. You know, I drank. I had a long night of drinking, and I, you know, was still hung over when I got in the water and I maybe I even my dive profile was irresponsible and so maybe it was all totally my fault. Let's put all that blaming and the hindsight after the fact. Get your problem solved. Be a diver for the future and a walker and a runner. Call them. There's no shame. No one is going to shame you on that phone. That phone call is a very easy one to make. If that helped one person, I'm going to feel satisfied about this video. See you next time on the beach. Bye. Hey, guys, what's the deal? Uh, are, are you sure that was sounding okay? I'll be honest, fellas, it was sounding great, but I could have used a little more cowbell. <laughs>